Okay, so this is mass on a spring, and this is how to um, how to do some of the work for this simulation. So goals here uh, are really two: to see what it is that affects frequency and what it is that affects period. And keep in mind that frequency and period are actually related. Um, they're actually the uh, the inverse of each other, and so we're looking at things that affect time. Uh, in regards to a wave. So, play, play around with the simulation a little bit. That's what this talks about, some things that you should do. You should do each of these things. All right? So follow each step, do each part. Don't just randomly play with it. Um, do each of these steps. The goal here, or the challenge, is to figure out what things you can do to affect the frequency and the period of a mass on a spring mass on a spring is going to generate a longitudinal wave. So this is important for understanding waves. Um, just like we said the other day, you only want to change one thing at a time. And so the first thing I'm going to change is mass. If you come over here and look at the interactive or the simulator, it looks like this. There are a number of masses. Probably the first thing you're going to want to do is take this random one and just move it out of the way. Don't worry if these are over here. Uh, they're not going to get in the way of the spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a low mass. I'm going to be systematic. I'm going to start off with a 1K mass. I'm going to okay, drop it on accident. And I keep dropping it. I'm not, mm, why? All right. Well, apparently I'm not very good at this. There we go. Oof, that's rough. Okay, so now I've got the mass oscillating, and I want to see, I want to vary one thing. So, what I've done is I've varied the mass. And you want to see what that does uh, to the, the spring and the wave. So, let me hit start and start collecting data. All right, there's no stop button on, on collecting the data, but once you get to the end, you can uh, move this slider around just by grabbing it with your finger on your phone or by clicking it with your mouse on your computer, and it'll give you the data at that point. So for instance, over here it says number of cycles, uh, start time, stop time, period, and frequency. So. First factor, since the factor is mass, I want to put 1K for the mass. That's the one, excuse me, 1 kg for the mass. That's the mass that I have. And let's get a starting point. So I'm gonna start right here at this peak, this peak right here. And it says that my height is negative 0.05. All right, but more importantly, it says that the time is 0.43 seconds. So that's going to be my start time. 0.43 seconds. And then I'm going to go, I could just go one cycle, all right, one wave if I wanted, or I can do multiple. Let's say I go over here to this peak right about, right about there. So if I go there to this peak, I need to count the peaks. That's one, two, three, four, five peaks. Oh, I, I screwed up. See, this is a common mistake. I shouldn't start with this one. That's actually gonna be peak zero. So that's one wave, two waves, three waves, and four waves. So that's four cycles. So I'll write that down here. And the stop time is 2.5 seconds. So I'll write that down here. Now, the period is the difference between those times. So period is t final minus t initial. And so that's 2.5 minus 0.43, or 2.07 seconds. You done? Yeah. All right, yeah, you just put it right there. Okay, so that's my period, 2.07 seconds. And the frequency is going to be, like I said earlier, the inverse of the period. So if in um, 
2.07 seconds, four waves goes by, then the frequency or how many waves goes by uh, would be the reverse of that. Uh oh, I made another mistake. So the period for four waves was 2.07 seconds. The period, however, for one wave is not 2.07 seconds. So let me figure out the period for one wave. So that's going to be 2.07 seconds divided by the four waves. And so that is going to be 0.5, let's see. Seven divided by four. Oops. Yeah. You done too? Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. Turn this off. Yeah. Just, no, just stick it right over there. And that's point five one seven five seconds. There we go. So there's the period for one wave. All right. Thanks for coming in, guys. Have a good one. So that's point five one seven five. There we go. And if I wanted to figure out the frequency, the frequency is going to be how many waves go by in one second. Well, we can see that it only takes about half a second for a wave to go by. So that means that uh, it's going to be about two waves per second. So if we want to figure out the frequency, there's an equation that we can use, and that is this. The frequency is equal to 1 over the period. Or in this case, 1 divided by 0.5175. And so I can calculate that. 1 divided by, yeah, there we go. And like I said, it's about 2, 1.93. That's the frequency. So that what that says is that, what that number means is that in one second, 1 1.93 waves are going to go by. All right, so this is one wave. All right, so there's going to be one wave per 0.5175 seconds. And so the frequency is waves per second. And so that's what this means, hertz. It's in waves per second. So that's what I would do there for the one kilogram mass. And now what I can do is reset it. And now I'll do the two kilogram mass. And let's see if I can get it up there. I don't know. There we go. Boom. Okay, and now I'll start collecting data again. <clears throat> and this is enough, so I'll stop. And I'll go back to a peak right about here. I'll write down the time, 0.21 seconds. So again, this is now two kilograms. Uh, let's see, my start time is going to be 0.21 seconds. I need to choose how many cycles. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just do 4 again, just because. And the time it takes to get there is 3.11 seconds. All right, you can already see that this is a longer time or a shorter time. Right, it's a longer time. So the period is going to be longer. So... <clears throat> I'm going to run out of space to do this math. You probably want to do it on a separate sheet of paper. But the, um, the period for the four cycles is going to be 3.11 seconds minus 0.21 seconds. And so that comes out to be 2.90 2 seconds. That's for four cycles, though. I've got to divide that by four. So the period is going to be 2.90 seconds divided by four cycles. And we'll let the old internet take care of that. So 2.9 divided by 4. Point 0.725 seconds. So that's the period for one wave. Now if I want to find the frequency, it's 1 over the period. Right, because it's one wave per period. And so that's going to be one wave divided by the time that it takes, or 0.725 seconds. And what is that? Uh-oh. One divided by that. There we go. 
three, seven, nine. And that's waves per second. So, more waves or fewer waves? When you add mass, you get fewer waves per second. It's going slower. <coughs> so, period that we had, 0.725 seconds, and the frequency was 1.3, I will call it 1.38. And you can start to see a pattern. And if I keep going with three kilograms, the period will continue to get longer and the frequency of the waves will continue to get shorter. So, that's a factor that affects frequency and period, mass, right? So what could we say? What's a conclusion we could say? Mass affects frequency how? You could say that when you increase the mass, it does blah, blah, blah to the frequency. When you increase the mass, it does blah, blah, blah to the period. What words would you put in there? Increasing the mass causes the frequency to what? Decrease. And we could say the same thing, except this time about period. It causes the period to increase. So. There's a statement that we can make based on the data that we found. So that's one example. That's my model for you. What else can you do? Are there other things you can change here? Let me reset. Other than mass, right? instead of changing the mass, you could put a single mass on here. Oops. Oh boy. Maybe someday I'll get this. I don't think so. Nope. All right, we'll just imagine there's a mass on there. There's other things I can change. I can change the stiffness and the dampening, how stiff the spring is. And then I can also change whether there's any kind of resistance to motion, just like the damping in the wave settings that we did. So you can try each of those things individually, here and here, and find some results. See how they affect frequency, see how they affect period. And then, Write down your statements. Take a look. Here's some statements that are very similar to mine. All right, so if you have any more questions, shoot me a message on the Remind app. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.